Vicamon is a machine language monitor released by Commodore in 1982 and is great for programming the VIC-20. Its interactive nature means that it can often be quicker to develop via this rather than using a fully fledged assembler because it's easier to enter, alter and test code without having to wait for an assembler to load source code, assemble it, write a binary and then finally load the resulting binary separately. It also makes it good for debugging our programs and understanding other people's better. Jeff Minter actually said in a 1983 edition of Compute Gazette that he programmed all his games in the past with the Vicmon cartridge before switching to a Commodore 64 assembler editor. And so this article is going to show how to use Vicmon to create a simple music player and then show how to move code about to extend it. It comes with an accompanying article which you may want to look at which explains it all in more detail. Unless the program we want to write is very simple, it's best to write it out in assembly language first. So here's our simple music player. It isn't an example of a good music player, but it's complex enough to demonstrate how to use Vicmon. So I generally find it's best to keep all the data for the program together in one area, and I find it easier when using Vicmon to keep the data at the start of the code because it makes it much easier to keep track of when moving code around. I also recommend breaking code into small subroutines which can be easily tested and where possible use position independent code, again so that they can be easily moved. This code uses two locations to control the sound, a location 900C which controls the frequency of sound oscillator 3 and 900E which controls the volume. And then if we look further down we can see that the notes are stored for Mary Had a Little Lamb as note length pairs and then that's terminated by a zero to indicate the end of the notes. And then the main code is below that. So we set the volume to maximum, and then we load a note, play the note, delay for the length of the note, break between the notes so we have a little pause between the notes, and then we move to the next note length pair unless we reach the terminating zero, in which case we come out, set the volume to zero, and then the BRK uh, would be used by Vicmon to come back to the Vicmon prompt. If we have a physical VIC and cartridge, then we can plug the cartridge in with the VIC turned off, turn it on, and then we're ready to go. Uh, failing that, if we're using an emulator, we can download an image for the VicMon cartridge from, uh, well, from various places such as uh, Zimmers.net. I've enclosed a link on the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, so then within the emulator, we would just attach the cartridge to 6000 hex and then we can start the machine language monitor by sissing to it uh, 24576 which is 6000 hex and then we can see here that we're showing the PC so the program counter, status register, accumulator, X register, Y register and the stack pointer. Vicmon uses locations in zero page and we don't want those corrupted by our program when it runs so we can create a virtual zero page with the E command. So on an unexpanded Vic we can use memory up to the screen map which is at 1E00. So in this case we'll create a virtual zero page at location 1500. We're now ready to enter our program. So we'll use the A command. Uh, for assemble and we'll assemble to location 1100 and this is because basic actually starts at 1000 but we want a little bit of leeway after the start of basic so we'll start at 1100 and then we'll enter our first command so we'll enter jump and then the this is going to be the jump to main however we don't know the address of main yet so we'll note down that this address this location needs changing and I always jump to the same location that we're at uh, to make it easier to spot and also so that we avoid any weird code uh, if we run it without realizing or at least less weird code and then to come out of the assembler we just press enter again okay so now we want to enter the tune so we'll use the M command this is for memory and we can see the next address after the jump is 1103 and then our Mary Had a Little Lamb tune is stored as note length pairs. So note length, note length, like that, and then terminated with a zero. So we'll enter these in. And then with the mem command, we can alter memory just by writing over it like this, and then pressing return at the end of the line. And then we can see that it's terminated with a double zero. And that's not terminating the M command, it's just terminating the tune that we're, uh, that we're recording in memory uh, from 1103 right through to 1137. 
So we're recording memory, we're recording our notes that uh, the, the notes location, the notes label is at 1103 and we can now enter the rest of our program. So we'll start again at uh, a uh, 1138 as that's the next location after the notes. Then here we are, we're using notes, so it says 1103 and we'll note down the address 113F as our next note label. And again, we don't know the address of end, so we'll use the current address. And we can see the weight address is at double, uh, double one four C. And the branch of equal address for weight two is a double a double one five A. Then we want to branch to next note. So we've noted down that uh, next note is at double one three F. We can actually see it on the screen here in any case. And then we want to load So this is our uh, end label. And then we'll note down that the last address of the program is at uh, double one double six. So we've got a couple of addresses we need to change at location double one double zero and double one four two. So double one four two is because we needed the end label. So with Vicmon, we can just go back and alter a line like this. So we'll set that to double one six one and press return and that'll change that line. And then for the, uh, for the first jump that we had, we use the D instruction to do it. So that'll disassemble the line. We could uh, disassemble a range if we wanted to. We could also scroll down here like this and it'll go through it. But uh, this is actually the note data, so it doesn't make any sense. So I'll change that jump there to 1138 and then come out of that. Uh, with the uh, disassemble instruction, we can also give it a range. So we could say 112, I don't know, 110B. And it would change that. Good, so now we've entered our program, we'll save that before we run it. So I'm using device one here, which is the cassette. If I wanted to use the, uh, dr uh, device eight for the diskette, then I would just change that to an eight, but I want to use the diskette. And we're going to go from double one double O, which is the start of our program. And we will assemble to, sorry, we'll uh, store, we want to store to 1166. However, the save command always uses the address past the last byte that you want to store, so therefore we're going to save to 1167. There we are, so we're saving Mary to, uh, to cassette. And then to test it works properly, I'll reset the VIC and uh, load it back in, and, uh, and then we'll run it. As well as sysing to 24576, we can also sys to four times, uh, sorry, six times, 4096. That's because the cartridge starts at the seventh 4K block in memory. So it's uh, an interesting way of thinking about it if you divide the memory up into 4K blocks like that. So we'll set the virtual memory again and then we'll load our program. Good. And now we can run the program by using the G command to go to 1100. And there we have a music player playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. It would be nice if the music player displayed the name of the piece of music it was playing. Altering the program is a chance to demonstrate some of the other powerful features of Vicmon. So we'll alter the code to create two subroutines. Uh, one to display the name of the piece of music and the other will be created from our current code to play the music. And this will leave the, the main code 
starting with two JSR instructions. So the first JSR instruction will be to P name. So we'll jump to the uh, subroutine P name, which will display the name of the piece of music and the following one to play, which will play the music. And then we'll follow that with a BRK, a break to come back to the Vic command prompt. Right, so let's alter the program. So the string Mary had a little lamb will proceed by a CLR, a clear screen uh, instruction, and uh, we'll follow it by a return character. And then that will be terminated with the zero. So this will be represented by 25 octets, and therefore we need to make space for that. So uh, for demonstration purposes, it would be good to put the name of the music before its notes in memory, and therefore we can show how we, how we move memory from the notes to the end of the code down. So we know at the moment that the, uh, the notes that occupy the area from 1103 to 1167. So we we'll use the T command to transfer uh, and move this area by 25 bytes to make room for the name string so that notes will now be at uh, 111C. So we do transfer 1103 to 1167 and the destination is 111C. And then we can now enter our name uh, our name string at location 1103. So we, again we use the memory command and we'll set it at 1103 and then we've already converted those bytes uh, of the string into hex. When you're entering strings like this, uh, often you get used to certain hex codes that will pop up. So for example, 20 we know straight away is space because uh, that's 32 in decimal. So you'll get used to sort of picking out certain things like this when you're using hex regularly. 0D is 13 in decimal, which is the return character, and then uh, 0 for termination. And then press enter again and then we come out of memory mode. If we wanted to we could see our string in memory in, as a reverse ASCII. So there's the I command for inspect. So we'll look at the range 1103 to 111B which is where our string is held. And there we are we can see uh, there's a dot because that's not a printable character and then we got Mary had a little lamb and then some other characters. Now we need the, the location of main now. Now we could calculate this quite easily but uh, an easy way to do it would be by finding the end of our notes, as we know that main comes straight after that. And we can do this using the h, the, uh, the hunt command. So if we look for the last three octets of the notes, so the last three octets of the notes were uh, uh, bf7800, and if we search from 111c to 1200, and then we'll look for those bytes. And there we are, we've returned 114E. So we can add 3 to that and we would get 1151 as the new address of main, which we can confirm by uh, disassembling 1151. And there we are, we have our uh, LDA hash dash dollar zero F, which is, um, uh, and those two instructions are going to set the volume to maximum. Great, so we've put our, uh, our name string in. We now need to make room for the two JSR instructions and the break instruction, the BRK instruction, as well as the P name subroutine. Well, we can quickly work out that we need 21 bytes for this and hence use the T command again to move the code forward a further 21 bytes. Uh, however, we need to find the end of the code, the uh, final BRK instruction. Well, we could run through disassembling the code from 1151 until we found it, but a quick way would be to use the H command again to find the last three octets of the code representing 900E, uh, so followed by a BRK, which is a uh, 0E9000 in machine code. So I can do hunt 1151 to 1200 and then 0E9000. And there we are, we've got 117D. So we'll add 2 to that, and we'll know that that's where the BRK is located, because uh, double zero is the opcode for the BRK instruction. So now we can move our code from 1151, 117F, and we're going to locate that to 1166. And that'll give us that extra 21 bytes that we need to put in our two JSR instructions, our BRK instruction and the P name subroutine. Right, the next thing we need to do is turn the BRK instruction at the end of our, uh, our bit of uh, code playing the music into an RTS instruction, and that's so that we can use it as a subroutine and return from it. So again, we'll use the H command from 1166 to 1200, 9000, we've got 1192, and then we can use the D command 
to edit location 1194. And there we are, we've got the BRK instruction. We'll change that to RTS. We could have just as easily have done 1194 RTS should we have wanted to. But it's nice to get the confirmation from the uh, disassembly. Now we've got our play subroutine. We need to point the instructions that are referring to notes to the correct location. To do this, we'll use the n command, which will renumber absolute addresses in the code. So our subroutine code runs from 1166 to 1194, and we know that notes is now 25 bytes higher in memory. We only want to alter locations that fall in the range 1100 to 1200. So we'll use n for renumber, and then our subroutine runs from 1166 to 1194. We want to shift it forward by uh, 25 bytes, which is 19 hex, and then any addresses in the range 1100 to 1200. Good. And then we can enter our uh, code for the JSR, the, the break commands, and the PNAME subroutine. So we know that this is going to start from 1151. And we can see as we entered this that uh, we didn't know the address at, uh, at the instruction at location 1151 and uh, we didn't know the address at location 115D and um, and back at uh, 1100, uh, jump to main, we wouldn't have known the address of main either. So we'll go back and change these bits of code. So we'll scroll up here and we'll alter the JSR to P name, which is the first one. So we'll change that to 1158. There we are. We just press return and that'll reassemble it. And then we also want the uh, branch of eCore to end P name. So we'll change that. That'll go to 1165. So that'll be the jump at the end there. Good. And then we just want to alter the main instruction. Uh, the jump to main, sorry. And we'll change that to 1151. Great. And then before running this code, we'll save it again in case you made any mistakes. At this point, we could run our code using the G command and go into 1100. However, what would be more interesting is if we were able to walk through the code and, uh, and have a look at it. Uh, this is really useful because uh, really when we're writing code like this, it's great to be able to test the subroutines individually, and therefore the walk command can be really useful in that. So if we uh, walk to 1100, and this will allow us to step through the instruction. So 1100 is our jump to main, and then here we are, we're about to run the first instruction within main. So that's our jump to the subroutine P name. We'll run the uh, JSR instruction, and there we are, we're inside P name now. And if we keep pressing return, We'll go through one instruction at a time. Here we're at our char out subroutine to output a character to the current output device, but we don't really want to go through and step through each part of the code in that because it's quite long. So instead of that, we can press the J instruction to execute the subroutine uh, and then uh, return straight away. And then we can carry on stepping through. Something that would be interesting to do is to break. Uh, so we could press stop, break at 1162. Now we could just break it 1162, in which case what would happen is when we continued execution, it would continue until it got to 1162 and then it would break out and return to the prompt. However, uh, what would be even more interesting to do is to uh, allow it to pass that a number of times first. So if we had a number after it, in this case, comma 0007, it would stop execution on the seventh time that location uh, 1162 was reached. So if I run that now and then We'll carry on with the code by just pressing G, which will continue from where the uh, program counter is. And there we are. So we can see that it carried on a number of times. So it gave us the chance to write Mary had, and then it broke out because it reached the seventh time. We can press RB to remove the breakpoint, and then we can continue running through our code. So we could now set a breakpoint uh, at the JSR instruction that's about to run the, the play uh, subroutine. So we could do that by doing break at 1154, and then we could continue, continue our execution. 
And there we are. So it finished printing off the rest of the string. So it finished off running the rest of the P name subroutine. And then we're ready to run our play subroutine. We won't step through that because the problem is it'll often stop at points where the music is playing and therefore we'll end up just with a long note, which will be a bit tedious. But uh, we'll continue the code at this point until it finishes executing at the end. It may seem a little odd having the notes and the assembly for this program as computer code rather than handwritten, but I did it this way just because it displays easier. One thing I should have mentioned when we were stepping through that code is that you can use the R command to alter uh, the registers. So we could have altered the X register to skip forward a bit of the string if we wanted to. So that would, uh, can be quite useful when you're testing your code and working out if it works properly. Uh, there's also a Q command, a quick trace. Uh, this is quite useful because it runs through the program at a slower pace and it allows you to stop it with um, stop and X. Uh, and then it'll interrupt it, display the contents of the registers, and uh, and then you can well you'll be in walk mode at that point. And the reason I'm not going to demonstrate it is that because we're using a virtual zero page, it's particularly slow, and it'd be quite tedious listening uh, to the. Um, it'd just be quite tedious going through it uh, in the video. And the final command for completeness is the fill command. So if I had a look at the range of memory at one one nine five. There we are, we can see that's what it occupies. So I could fill that range with a single byte. So we could go 1195 to 11A4, for example, and we'll fill it with the, um, the byte 20. And if we do that memory range again, have a look at it, and there we are. We can see it's all full with uh, 20. So far we've shown the program being run from within Vicmon. However, there is a slight wrinkle, and that's that within Vicmon we would use a BRK at the end of the program to return to the, the, uh, the Vicmon prompt. However, if we wanted to run this outside of Vicmon, for example, if we wanted to run it from BASIC, then we would use an RTS instruction at the end so that we could sys to it, because sys would expect an RTS to return back uh, to BASIC properly. So if we alter location 1157, where the BRK is currently, and change that to an RTS instruction. And then we can exit out of BASIC, uh, sorry, exit out of VicMon and back to BASIC. And then we can run our program, which is at location 1100. Uh, 1100 is 4352 hex. So we'll sys to 4352. While that plays, I've noticed that I've often referred to octets in this video rather than bytes. And that's just because I've been doing some work handling 8-bit data on the 12-bit PDP-8 and therefore had to be more precise. However, on the VIC, they're effectively the same thing. Well, there we have it. So, as you can see, VicMon is a really quite powerful machine language monitor. It's great for developing on the VIC-20, particularly if you're only using tape, because to use an assembler with just tape would be a bit of a pain. It is possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I think VicMon is just much quicker. All you need to do is keep good notes and then you can easily move things around in memory as long as you're quite structured as far as putting the subroutine, uh, creating small subroutines and then testing them individually. Uh, everything should go to a plan without too many problems. There's some more information on the associated article on the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, there's a full command table, a link to the manual, a link to download the cartridge image. Uh, there's also a complete listing of the program. Not that I would recommend it as a good example of a music player. It was created purely to demonstrate how to use Vicmon, but it's there in any case if you're interested. Uh, there's some also some more articles about the Vic20 on the website and some more uh, videos about the Vic20 on the YouTube channel. And it'd be great if you could share this video and please subscribe.